Hello, Miracle Makers. Uh, I'm Reverend Kevin Rice, and tonight we are reviewing Lesson 47, one of my favorites. Uh, God is the strength in which I trust. And before we go through the lesson, Reverend Susan Stone will lead us in our meditation and posture. Go ahead. <laughs> we almost ran right into each other. So, hello, everyone. And I am just wanting to remind you to enter in your favorite quote from, face, uh, from Course of Miracles in our Facebook contest so that you can win, enter the drawing to win our um, complete edition. And what is the date, edition. by the way? We're, doing, we're going to draw it and, and at the end of um, next week, I guess. Yeah. So we'll do it next week. We have one more week. Yep. Yeah, okay, good. So we are going to do um, a psyche balance, which puts you in an alpha state so that you can program this into your body. So I'm going to take on the energy for a second. And it is right ankle on top. So cross your right ankle on top. And it is right wrist on top this time. So right wrist. And then point your thumbs to the floor, interlace your fingers, and you can either just relax into your lap or curl up, like eagle pose, whatever feels more comfortable. Close your eyes and put your tongue at the roof of your mouth and start to breathe in through your nose. And just feel yourself settling into your body. What you are doing is you're crossing energy meridians so that the right side of the brain is now being able to talk and access the left side of the brain so that you're going from a beta state to a more relaxed alpha state where we can do subconscious change. So our lesson today is going to be our goal statement, our belief statement that we're programming in. And that is, God is the strength in which I trust. So you're going to say that over and over silently in your mind. God is the strength in which I trust. And you will feel a shift. It might feel like a physical just kind of wave of energy or it might feel like an emotional just letting go, or it might feel just like a mental, I've got this. But once you feel the shift, you know the resistance to this statement, God is the strength in which I trust, is gone. And that statement is permanently yours. So I'm gonna remain silent while you continue to do that. God is the strength in which I trust. And when you feel that shift, go ahead and open your eyes, uncross your legs, uncross your arms, and put your fingertips together like this. And with your eyes open, take about 10 seconds and lock in. God is the strength in which I trust. Because we downloaded this and now we're gonna save it. This is like our save button. God is the strength in which I trust. Yeah, so wonderful, so great, yay, good job. 
So I also want to let you guys know that we are a 501c3 charity, and we appreciate any donation that you feel um, led to give, and it is 100% tax deductible, and it is extremely appreciated by all of us. So enjoy your lesson tonight. Thank you, Reverend Kevin. Okay, folks. Look, uh, I want to remind you all that this is a safe place. You will not be judged, attacked, guilted, or shamed in any way, only loved. And here at TASA, we will always use words and behaviors that reflect kindness, healing, graciousness, respect, courtesy, and always being authentic. And this is very, very important. And be uh, before we move to reviewing the lesson tonight, a few reminders quickly. Uh, our group here every Thursday night is on live, Facebook Live right here. And also, if, if you don't have friends, for instance, who doesn't, uh, isn't on Facebook, for instance, it is recorded. And they can watch this on our website, the Academy of Spiritual Awakening, and it's already done. Um, also, starting July 20th, uh, we're going through the 50 Miracle Principles in our new book that came out in uh, January, A Course in Miracles based on the original handwritten notes of Helen Chuckman. In the first four chapters, we're dealing with 50% more information that was given in it. So it's, it's uh, a wonderful, um, magnificent uh, uh, book. And it's on our website. And here, too, we've got some books here as well. And finally, uh, please always like and share. And this is not to en enrich Kevin Rice or Susan Stone, but it is really helpful to extend our message to the world that is in de desperate need of it. Okay? So we're doing this, and thank you all for being here. So we can just start. If anybody needs this, by the way, does anybody have a, anybody need, everybody got their hey, own books. That's great. Book. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, again, we are going through Lesson 47, God is the Strength in Which I Trust. Let me get it here on my iPad. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start. Uh, we're going to do one paragraph. This is a very brief lesson. I also added another one. I know you, uh, a, a long one. Uh, you also, I added lesson 48 af afterward. It's like three or four paragraphs if we need that uh, extra lesson. Okay, uh, here we go. Lesson 47, God is the strength in which I trust. If you are trusting in your own strength, you have every reason to be apprehensive, anxious, and fearful. What can you predict or control? What is there in you that can be counted on? What would give you the ability to be aware of all facets of any problem and to resolve them in such a way that only good can come of it? What is there in you that gives you the recognition of the right solution? and the guarantee that it will be accomplished. Okay, a couple of things here. You know, right as Susan was doing through the meditation and the affirmation and so forth, as she did it, immediately, uh, the default in my mind, immediately, and this occurs when I do a lecture at Miami, for instance, uh, or any time I'm teaching at all, Right before I say, it cannot be difficult to do the task that Christ has asked us to do because it is the Christ who does it. Okay? This is a process. <laughs> Thank you, Carol. This, this is a process where you step back. You step back and you allow the light within you to step forward, to lead you and to guide you to an awareness of who you really are. So you have to know the difference here between your own strength and the strength of God within you. So you're always, again, between two choices and two choices and two voices that you have in any moment. Okay? Am I relying upon my own strength in this process? Or am I going to rely instead 
upon the strength of God within me. Okay? So, here it says, if you are trusting in your own strength, you have every reason to be apprehensive, anxious, and fearful. Hello? Yes. Yeah. Do you all get this? Amen. Of course you do. My God. Look, you have every reason to be afraid when you are placing your attention uh, and your energy to Kevin Rice. Okay? That's going to fail you time and time again. Because this is not a process in which you are alone. God is a present help in times of need. Okay? And, and, and I mentioned this pre, uh, previously last week, I think, that the moment that... You, you, let me just say it this way. Whenever you become afraid, as this is talking about, you have to also believe the notion that you are alone. That you are separate from me, that I'm separate from you, that you are separate from your source. And you're not. And when you begin to remember that within yourself, then the fear begins to dissolve. So I'm not here asking you to rid yourself from fear. But instead to become aware of the condition which brings the fear about in the first place. What is the condition which brings fear about in your mind and in your psyche? Okay? It is the belief, again, that you are without help from your source. This is why I have this and I, I, you know, take it with me wherever I go. I had my friend Marcio here last night <coughs> at my house and he said, what is that? I said, well, it's an inverted here, and it was a gift from uh, Edgardo Grossa in Miami, and, but it's Jesus, you know, and it, it does remind me that I'm not alone here, that if ever I have a, a moment, a doubt, whatever, boom, I remember that I'm not alone. And, and this is an opportunity, by the way, to really acknowledge the presence of God in our midst right now. Can you just do, join with me in that recognition that God is here and in the midst of us as well. And because of that, what we want to experience is the sacred quality that exists right here and right now. I'm reminded of a story uh, years ago of a woman who, whose son was in a war and who had died. And she went to the Eastern mystics and so forth, a guru, and she went to the guru and said, hey, my, my, you know, my son has died and so forth, and she began to cry. And the guru said to her, look, it's, it's, it's not my responsibility to wipe your tears away, but to help you to recognize them as holy. As what? It's to recognize them as holy, that your tears are as holy as the moments when you don't cry, when you're experiencing happiness and so forth. So regardless, Carol, of what we are experiencing, whether it be good, bad, failure, success, uh, uh, moments of having a call to health or not. And all of us here have experienced that to, uh, to, ex to whatever extent. But at the end of the day, you have to recognize that what you were experiencing is not an unholy moment, but what you were experiencing is a holy moment. And when you begin to change your perception of everything that occurs here, then that is where the miracle occurs. Okay, and secondly on this uh, paragraph, and then we'll ask any questions or comments that you guys have. What is there in you that gives you the recognition of the right solution and the guarantee that it will be accomplished? Now this is really huge because you have to, re you have to remove yourself from the notion that you know what is in your own best interest. 
that if you do things properly, then you're going to have a solution from all of your problems. Okay, I have one word for this. Baloney. Yeah. Baloney. Okay, this is why a lesson in A Course in Miracles, yeah, says I place the future into the hands of God. So it's not in my hands anymore. It's in the hands of God. Because I know that all things that occur within this time and space continuum, past, present, and future, is all planned by one who wants to bring you the gift of, of God, the kingdom, as you refer to it, Carol, and I refer to it as well. The kingdom is in you right now. You miss that the moment that you are not spontaneous, okay? Because the moment that you plan uh, overly, you can plan for the future, fine, but your magnification is not in time and space. It is in the eternal, idea. timeless now. I'm sorry, Amber? You can't marry that idea. You, you can't. Can have a, you, can have, you can project a happy future, but not to the detail of if it doesn't come out looking like this, it has to be able to change form. So yeah. So, and many here are in unity as well, so you know this well. Uh, and also in A Course in Miracles. Whenever you have a problem, okay, and you want a solution for that, what do you do? Do you try to rearrange time and space to get the thing that you want? Baloney again. What you instead want to do, and what I want to do too, is to place my trust in my source. Uh, and when you do that, 100% with conviction, with confidence, then the problem begins to disappear. So if you got a, a problem, what do you have to do? I want to make sure and that I'm clear about this too, Amber. So if you have any questions, let me know. Whenever you release yourself from time and space and the world of form, okay, you then place yourself in the eternal timeless now. So that is where your trust occurs in God, in love. So Unity principle, Principles, uh, Emmett Fox, many of you know him, I think the booklet is called The uh, Mental Equivalent. Yeah. Okay, so you know it, Carol. And that whenever you have a problem, think about God instead. Think instead about love, okay? So what, what happens there? that you remove yourself from time and space in that moment and place yourself in the substance, the content of God's love. And when you rest in that, your problems begin to easily disappear. Okay? Because you're not giving your attention or your energy or time to those small, trivial things. Your mind is too holy to entertain those small things within the world of time and space and form. Do you guys get this? You look like you have some questions. Do you have a well, question, I'll Amber? Stop. Come on. Um, well, the, the hard part for me, well, yes, it's a very simple notion to release all of your, you know, you're in the middle of your planetary drama, and then to say, well, just release to, to God in the knowing that something. And then that's the, the hard part for me to understand is, okay, the concept is great, but how does one go from... You, you right. saying implement it? Yeah, exactly. And it's not, it doesn't seem as simple to implement that. Yeah. I, I go to the Bible. If you go to um, Jeremiah 33, 3, okay. he said, it's, ask God, I'm paraphrasing. Okay. Ask God your question, any answer to your question, and God will go, show you great and mighty things. And we are supposed to cast our cares on the Lord. So some people say, great grace, great grace, great grace, and give it to God. Look, it is that simple. 
it, it, because what, what is happening here is a temptation with people, especially of students of A Course in Miracles, who think that what they're experiencing is about a thousand choices that they need to make. They don't. They have one choice, okay? Listening to the voice of love, okay, and going forward with that mentality, or they are listening to the voice of fear. If they are listening to that voice and giving their attention to it and magnified it, what, what happens? Then they are asleep. They're asleep. So you want to be awakened. And the way that you want to experience that awakeness, awakeness is to be here now in the substance and the portal and the window where God's gifts gives to you freely without expectation, without any agendas whatsoever. And in that moment when you place your, your confidence in that, that is where your problems begin to disappear. So, so this is very important as well. Because most people want to say, oh, well, I'm happy when this person does this or that, when this person acts more graciously, then I'll be happy and so mm -hmm. forth. Yeah. When the, the responsibility is in you Absolutely. and in me. I am responsible for what I see, okay? I know what the goals that I have, what the decisions I need to make and so forth, but I'm not doing it alone without a, a present help in times of need. Mm -hmm. So again, you, Carol is correct in this regard. And this is very explicit in the cameos as well. That you can ask specific questions from your, to your source and asking for help. And again, the more specific that you can be, um, again, it's easier to give that over the care and the con concern to your source as well. And I do this uh, often throughout the week. And I will open up my journal and say, Jesus, hey, this person is being very difficult with me. This, you know, I have a problem here with this or that. I want to turn this over to you entirely. I want to place this into your hands. And I want you to be in charge of what? The minutia of time and space. So the moment that we are invested in the minutia, then we are dragged down because of it. And it is a testimony to ourselves of who we really think we are. If we are bound by minutia, then we're small. We're dealing with a grandios the, the grandiosity of the ego. When you begin to let the minutia go away, then you begin to tether yourself and I your identity to who you really are and who I really am. The Christ, the son of the living God, the daughter of God. That's who you are and that's who I am. And when you begin to remember that identity then, your problems begin to disappear easily. Uh, I can give you several, just from this week, <clears throat> problems that begin to disappear the moment I turn them over. And that, that your, your vehicle is your journal, for instance. So you just literally journal it and... Well, not only that. Your prayer and your and journaling it. Well, but keep in mind as well that what we are discussing this evening is God is the strength in which I trust. So that means, that's the second thing. You're asking me, one is my journal, fine. The second one is this statement as well. The first one is I rest in God before I go to sleep every night. Just, I'm laying there, I rest in God, I rest in God, I rest in God, and I lock it in mentally. And then the second one is what we are discussing this evening. God is the strength in which I trust. And this is, this is regarded as, uh, is regarding as well with respect to your problems as well. Because when you're trying to fix your problems, you are relying upon your own strength. 
And that is what causes anxiety and fear. When you instead place your attention to God within you and in your brothers and sisters, again, God is the strength in which I trust. And I do that every night too, secondly. And the third one that I do, we'll do this next week too. I don't want to give it too much here. But again, those two things are so important. And third, we have to have reminders. This is why we at the Academy are going through together on the 20th. Going through the text, going through the lessons every day. And when we do that, the reason why is because we must have reminders. And if we don't have those reminders, then something has gone wrong. I know that you want to say something, I want Susan. to say, I know I'm holding my tongue, I'm sorry. Come on, <laughs> I say, know you will. We, by the way, Susan and I have one mind, and he, she uses that mind most of the time, I don't. So, That's not true. anyway, it's no. not true. So I'm gonna give you a practical what I do, okay? So I'm walking, I'm walking every morning, and I'm at a three-way stop, and I start to cross, because I'm the pedestrian, right? And this big Tahoe lady starts to like run me over. Mm -hmm. And I smacked on her, her hood. I mean, she, she was gonna run me over, and right. Tahoe's huge. Mm -hmm. And I started to go into the fear mm -hmm. of, the I work for myself, if I get run over, I'm not gonna be able to pay my anything, and I'm gonna end up under a bridge, and da da da, and how could this lady not live, and I, you know, and I went, no, 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 no. How can I see this differently? Because I was mad, because sure. I was scared, right? Yeah, right. And, mm -hmm. and so I, I put myself, I, 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 I'm very kind of static, so I take myself out of my body, and I go up high. How can I see this differently? And then I got this voice that said, just forgive her. Ooh. And I knew by the look on her face, she was horrified that she almost ran me over. I mean, and there were th two other cars watching the whole thing going down. And I said, it's okay, I forgive you. And, and I just waved her by, I said, it's okay, I forgive you, I understand. Because she didn't mean to do that at all. And then I realized that was such a better gift for me to forgive instead of spend the whole day worrying about being under a bridge. Because I could have done that to myself all day long. <laughs> you know? And and I live by myself. How am I going to take care of myself? Da, da, da. You know, who's going to pick me up at the hospital? Who's going to take me to the hospital? You know, I mean, just... And I could have done that all day long because there was a huge adrenaline fear. So my simple sentence is, how can I see this differently? because I believe everything is in my highest and best good. So when I go into that higher place, like my higher self, my higher sure. self, and joining with my, my source and my wisdom, sure. then I get the answer, because I just physically remove myself out of my human body. Right, you know, in, in my mind. Those are all egotistical yeah. situations. Yeah. Earthly feelings, earthly things. Yeah. And Right, and you so have I to just, see it in another way. Yeah, how can I see this differently? Because what's that when I'm not angry for the reason I think? Yeah. That's yeah. huge for me. Yeah. I mean, because yeah. then I really start to figure out why I'm, I'm not really angry at that person. <laughs> right. I'm angry for another reason, yeah. you know, yeah. so it's very... Excellent. Helpful. Thank you so much, Susan. Well yeah, Carol. I have a question. It, it's okay... In, in writing your journal first to say, God, I'm, or Lord Jesus, I am upset. And Absolutely. You can write that first. Yes, look, and we're going to be reading this in just okay. a few minutes, too, that we have to acknowledge our own frail, frailty. And, you know, um, we have to acknowledge the miscreation that we, we made. Uh, as well as the creations as well. So there's a difference between your your temptation to have miscreation, in other words, using time and space to further yourself, okay? Then you have what is creation, and that is you create uh, in the eternal timeless now. So the energy that you use in creation is beautiful, 
and brings wondrous results because of it. But we do have an energy when we miscreate as well. That M energy does mac manifest itself in life. Because, yes, but like I said last week, you know, I have a new phrase, right? That when we have gloom and doom, then boom, boom. right? <laughs> it happens. Yeah, you missed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yes, but absolutely, it is important that we have a personal relationship with our source or our brother, our way shower, whatever you want to call it, and being honest, you know? <laughs> Uh, I have done it many, many times. So, Yule, can you go to the second one here? Can you just say the two things that you do repeat? Yeah, there's three things. And last week we did the first one, which is I rest in God. Okay. Okay, and the second one is God is the strength in which I trust. Okay. And the third one is I am not a body. I am free. I am still as God created me. Okay, that is the third one. I hope that we get an affirmation that works for that. Yeah, we can. <laughs> we can. That's great. Okay, you all. Okay. And by the way, I love you all so much. Yeah, I, I, you know, do you do you feel the communion that we are experiencing with each other? Absolutely. It's so palpable, mm -hmm. and this this is what happens when you switch switch your perception, as you just mentioned it, Susan, when you acknowledge. That holiness is here, that God is here, boom, it changes the way you really look at your world. Mm -hmm. sure. The world can only give to you what you are giving to it. Mm -hmm. right. And right now what we are giving to the world is holiness, okay? That the world is without sin entirely. Yeah. You'll me. Of yourself, you can do none of these things. To believe that you can is to put your trust where trust is unwarranted and to justify fear, anxiety, depression, anger, and sorrow. Who can put his faith in weakness and feel safe? Yet who can put his faith in strength and feel weak? Actually do one more. It's brief. God is your safety in every circumstance. His voice speaks for him in all situations and in every aspect of all situations telling you exactly what to do to call upon his strength and his protection. There are no exceptions because God has no exceptions. And the voice which speaks for him thinks as he does. Okay. So, at the beginning of, of yourself, you can do none of these things. Again, bring yourself a resolution, a solution, or anything. You cannot do this by your own strength. And this is the illusion. Because anybody who is using the tools of separation in their thoughts, this is the notion that they hold on to over and over. Oh, I, can, I have the strength for this and so forth. I can do this myself. I can create, I can change the world by myself. Again, that's bogus. Now, um, look, uh, I, I want to change the world, and I'm going to. And I, I think that having you there with me, uh, helping the world to do that, we're going to do just that. But we can't do it on our own. Jesus so, had 12 disciples. Yeah, yeah. Just saying. He just had 12 saying. disciples. He was really well advised. <laughs> right, exactly. He was plugged in. <laughs> exactly. Because actually, A Course in Miracles goes even further. How many people do you need in your world to change the world? One. One. Me. Yes. It's me. Mm -hmm. Okay? And of course, when you work with another person, there's another statement, and Susan and I have done this together. Mm -hmm. You know, when two people can agree that the peace of God is the only thing that they really want, mm -hmm. it can be enough to change the world, to save the world. And that's what we are doing here. Now, it's really nice to have all these people here on uh, Facebook Live as well, because I, I really do appreciate it when people like and share, because that will extend a message to the world that is in darkness. Mm -hmm. And we are here to extend instead the light of the world, because we are not a child of darkness. 
We are a child of the light. We are a child of the day. And that is what we want to extend to the world. You got something? I'm still Sure. Okay. <laughs> well, no, I did want to say something. I knew I knew something here. <laughs> um, I think that, to, to your point, I think it's really important to have phrases that you, when you get in a rough time, mm -hmm. that you just have phrases that yes. really resonate with you. I know in years ago when I was going through a hard time, I used to say, and this was more of a unity principle, but divine love is in control mm -hmm. and all is well. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. And whenever I got upset, I would just say that to myself over and over and over again, and it would just have this soothing effect. Well, I've been so helpful where I was. <laughs> and, I, and I did pray, and that's the thing. I, I know that I have my own way, but I realized also that I was out of control mm -hmm. with my fears. Like, and, and it was before, I think it was before they decided to operate on me. Yeah. And then I was, you know, heavy prayer. Heavy prayer! And I think it was because all of you, actually, it was, it was a Thursday, I think, because you all got together. There was no fear from that moment. And, and I had spoken to you, and I spoken to you, and I, I know, and it was that. Mm -hmm. You do need to have something mm -hmm. that you can remind yourself that. Especially when you're that, in you know, fear like that. It needs to be something you can grab. You know, right. Yeah. Because the fear can take over. It yeah. does. It does. And I'm not sure, if, you know, that doesn't help with the, the drug induction. Yeah. You know? yeah. Right. <laughs> and then you get all yeah. confused. Yeah. But it's true. That it's it was one of those moments that it was. But once the fear was gone, and that's what was the miracle. I was cheery. I was like, ready? Let's go. And I knew that I was connected. But that disconnection. Is such a fearful place. Yeah. Well, this is very and you germane. Think that it's you, right? You know? Yeah. Like, and and this is what you were referring yeah. to. That was really germane. I really wanted to mention it about five minutes ago, but then I thought, ah, oh, I'll, I'll mention it if it's if it's necessary, because I don't say this every night anymore. I have said it so many times that it'll make your head spin. Mm -hmm. uh, I know it really well. And I, I even brought this here. I thought, oh, if we go through this lesson really quickly, then I want to put another one behind it. Lesson 48. There is nothing to fear. Okay. I think that if somebody asks me, what is the most important thing, the affirmation that you use from A Course in Miracles that really affects you more than anything? And I tell them every single time, there is nothing to fear. God is only love. Now, why is this important? This is important because you have to do what the Taoists say as well. The Tao Te Ching. Trace the children back to the mother. Or as A Course in Miracles says it in that par parlance, is you have to trace the effect back to the cause. Mm. The, the center, uh, the core, of everything that brings suffering and problems and so forth is fear, okay? So you can call it something else. You can call it... It has different disguises. Yeah, <laughs> disguises and so yeah. forth. So what you want to do is bring it back to the cause. Keep in mind this fact. All correction within this world does not occur within time and space. It occurs in the level of mind. So, yeah, we can make changes in, in our behavior, absolutely, but we, again, have to trace the effect back to the cause. Where is the cause? In the level of mind. So the level of mind is the place of causation. Mm -hmm. You get this? Yes. It is cause. This is effect. This <laughs> is a reflection, a mirror, okay? You can, you can attempt to change the mirror as much as you want, you know, but it's, it's going to be useless. You want to go to the source. You want to go to where the error occurred and you want to correct it at that level. And so when you do that, by saying, there is nothing to fear, God is only love. Let's say that together. There, there is, is nothing, nothing to fear, fear. God, God is, is only love. love. One more time. There, there is, is nothing, nothing to fear, fear. God is only love. So then how do you get to the core? You are at the core. 
That because that is the core that you have miscreated. So you want to, actually, uh, that's a very good question. Look, we, this is what A Course in Miracles says, denying the denial of truth. So at the first time, there is nothing to fear. You are denying the denial of uh, reality by saying there is nothing to fear. Then you want to replace it with the thing that will take you to its real core. Okay. And that is your question. God is only love. You see, you remove the first one, there is nothing to fear, and you replace it, there is only God's love. That's you, it. You, do, you don't have to find out what the root is, or the, the core is. You, you, you are. You are arriving at the, the, the core. The solution is in those two phrases. Yes, because one is miscreation and the other is creation. Okay, cool. So the miscreation was its cause was this. The, this is drama. right. This is drama, time and space, so forth. And yeah, you will perpetuate um, uh, experiences from your miscreation. Okay, because that has energy and it does produce things. When you replace it with God is only love. Okay, you are then bringing yourself, you're collapsing time and space, you're bringing yourself into the eternal timeless now, and you also reach the core of reality by saying, God is only love. You see this? The difference here between those two dynamics? You all get this? Okay, good. The next, can you read the next one or, or pass, whatever you're not, uh, whatever. Number Four, mm-hmm. yeah. Are you reading? He asked you. Um, so yeah, for today, four. we will try to reach past your own point of weakness. Is that where you're? Yep. Yes. Okay. Source of real strength. Four or five minute practice periods are necessary today, and longer and more frequent ones are urged. Close your eyes and begin as usual by repeating the idea for the day. And the idea for the day. God is the strength in which I trust. Okay? Then spend a minute or two in searching for situations in your life which you have invested with fear, dismissing each one by telling yourself, God is the strength in which I trust. Okay. God is the strength in which I trust. And when it says spend a minute or two in searching for situations in your life, which you have invested with fear, dismissing each one by telling yourself, God is the strength in which I trust. Now this is very important because most people have, um, they replace fear with another word. You mentioned this, Amber, that they don't want to, they really don't want to look for it and call it fear when it is in fact what they are experiencing. They can call it doubt, they can call it stress, they can call it whatever they want to call it, but it is fear manifesting itself in many, many ways. So we have to acknowledge that number one, we have miscreated fear, okay? So the first thing is to acknowledge that you, that you have miscreated a notion of fear, which is completely an illusion, a fallacy. Again, you have to own what you are miscreating or creating in your mind. That is so important. You have to own it 100%. You can't blame anybody else for your suffering. You cannot do anything placing responsibility on other people and so forth. You have to be mindful of your own integral part of your mind and soul and spirit. And when you do that, my God, your world begins to change accordingly. Does anybody have any questions or comments about that? No, that was really very clear. Okay, Susan, do you have something? Again, I have a sense that you've got something in your mind. Well, I, I, I agree with you, though I do think there is validity, and, and I, I believe with everything you said, but I have found it helpful to say, why am I feeling this way? What thought is causing me to feel this way? Like, right. there's no such thing as a feeling without first a thought. And then, 
then I trace it back to do I really have to believe that thought? You know, do I, is that, you know, and, mm -hmm. and then, then I say, how do I see this differently? Yeah. And um, that helps me because I get a self-awareness. But I like what you're saying is you're reprogramming your response to fear or frustration or lack. Because it is all fear. Yeah. I mean, fear of judgment, fear of loss, fear of guilt, fear of... I mean, it's, it's all fear. Mm -hmm. All of it. So... You're, you're correct. You're at, we're on the same page, yeah. Susan. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One hundred percent. Can I say it's it one how you more? Get to, to the source. Right. How this is explaining it, which is awesome. Okay. So let me explain it a different way. Okay. Again, there are two dynamics here. One is miscreation. The other is creation. Mm -hmm. Miscreation is the notion, the fallacy, that cause and effect is here's cause. And this is effect. Mm -hmm. And the purpose of A Course in Miracles is to remind you of your reality. So that cause is God and its effect is you. You are the effect of God's cause. Mm -hmm. You see, you move that cause and effect mm -hmm. relationship that you have between you and your world to a larger dynamic where your cause is God and it, God's effect is you, mm -hmm. that it's creation. So when you tether yourself, again, but Susan is correct as well. Uh, and, and sometimes Aaron, or Aaron, there I go again. <laughs> Susan and I will just not, we'll, we'll disagree from time to time. We haven't yet, I don't think, but you know, we might have different interpretations and that's just fine, we yeah. don't care. But I think we're 100% on the same page. Yeah, you have those two dynamics, okay? Um, because you're not your own author. Okay, that's the difference. You, you, you cannot create yourself, okay? You can co-create only to the extent that you understand that cause is God and its effect is you. You see? It's a huge difference between my egoic identity mm -hmm. and what well, effects. When you come through there, you can see more chaos. But as you come through love, and it is through you, the effect is is a different. Is you effect. because you are perfect love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anything less than perfect love. Huh. Yeah. Again, remember uh, our very Maybe first. Some perfect love. Yeah, and we put this in our website at the Academy of Spiritual Awakening as well. Nothing real can be uh, no, nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. That's it. Right. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. Again, that is the difference between your ability to exercise creation under your father or miscreation when you confuse or I confuse who I think I am. Okay? Does that make sense? Do you have another question? You yes. Know, in, in, in your phrase that I use for this scenario, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. And I, so I say that, I say that to myself. See, it is easy. <laughs> That's yes. another one I use too. That's a great See it as easy. See it as easy. See it as easy. Oh, I haven't just seen it. Do you have an easy button? I, yeah, I have From an Staples? easy button. Yeah, I have a See it as easy. Cool. Yeah. See it as easy. Yeah. I like that. Any other questions, comments? Okay. Uh, the next one is five. Five, yeah. Yeah, do five and six. It's me, it's me now, isn't it? Okay, now, now try to slip past all concerns related to your own sense of inadequacy. It yeah. I like that. The situation which causes you concern is, oops, sorry, I've got pages stuck together, is associated with feelings of inadequacy, since otherwise you would believe 
that you could deal with the situation successfully. It is not by trusting yourself that you will gain confidence, but the strength of God in you is successful in all things. The recognition of your own frailty is a necessary step in the correction of your errors, but it could hardly be sufficient one in giving you the confidence in which you need and to which you are entitled. You must also gain an awareness that confidence in your real strength is fully justified in every respect and in all circumstances. Okay. The operative statement there for me is the recognition of your own frailty is a necessary step in the correction of your errors. So, you have to become aware of the frailty of your own miscreations. And Amber, look, I hope this is okay. You know, we know that you went through a recovery recently, okay? And Carol, you did too, and so did I, okay? Uh, and probably the other people here too, right? And what we, I think, had to understand ourselves is our own frailty of what happens as a result of tethering ourselves within a pile of dust we call a body. Mm -hmm. So, uh, personally, I know I have a threshold. You know, when my body says, stop, this is done, and my brain literally has a glitch from time to time, it's happened twice since the surgeries, Susan knows this well, mm -hmm. where I just stop. I can't speak, text, yeah. do anything. But again, because I, again, I do not r recognize the frailty that I'm going through right now. So I forget about it from time to time, and I push the river yeah, too much. You try and push right through it. Yeah, and and look, this is what this course is really referring to: is we have to acknowledge that. Oh, yeah, there there is a threshold of frailty, somewhat. And in those so moments, though, do so much. yeah, because in those moments, though, Amber, is because it's that moment that we can then switch our attention from mm -hmm. our own frailty mm -hmm. to the strength of God within me. And every single night when I'm in my hospital bed uh, and when I got home for months and I said, God is the strength in which I trust. Mm -hmm. It isn't me. That's what, one of the reasons why I think that I went through this successfully, not because I was successful, because I knew the art of stepping back and allowing the light within me to step forward. That is where the strength of God abides. abides. We're not going to experience it until we step to the set. To the, to the left or the right, right. and say, well, I'm here for you, you know. Surrendering to you. 100% surrendering to our source. And in that recognition, that is where the gift occurs. Do you have something you're looking on? No, I'm good. You're good? I'm, okay. I'm just going to uh, say he's that. He's like good at surrender. He's like good yeah. so, uh, He got it. Um, <laughs> I, I think that that is so wonderful because the last thing you need to do when you're trying to heal is to just stress out that you have to do it all alone. Yeah. yeah. You know, and stress is the number one barrier to healing. It really is an energy vampire. So if you can say, I don't, it's not my strength, it's God's strength that's doing this, then it, it lets you off the, I yeah. have to do this. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's, it's such a healing, I mean, first of all, it's true, but second of all, it's just so good for your soul and your body to let go of, I have to do all of this, you know? You know, my, after my surgery, I said, I can't do this, how in the world are going to do this? And God said, you don't have to do it, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I'll do it. Perfect. Yeah, that's true. You know? Oh, okay. What do we have? Two more yes. here. Yes. <laughs> and it's uh, let me look here. Um, seven and eight. Oh yeah, seven and eight. Who isn't right? Uh, okay. Can you do it, Georgie? 
In the latter phase of the practice period, try to reach down into your mind to a place of real safety. You will recognize that you have reached it if you feel a sense of deep peace, however briefly. Let go all the trivial things that churn and bubble on the surface of your mind and reach down and below them to the kingdom of heaven. There is a place in you where there is perfect peace. There is a place in you where nothing is impossible. There is a place in you where the strength of God abides. Amen. During the day, repeat the idea often. Use it as your, an as your answer to any disturbance. Remember that peace is your right because you are giving your trust to the strength of God. Okay, a uh, couple of final things here. One, uh, it says reach down into your mind to a place of real safety. Look, and one of the, I, the, I, I say those three things before I go to sleep, but one of the things I want to experience um, is the safety that it surrounds me. You know, I, I remind, I, I had a, a police off, officer in Miami when I lived there for 10 years in Coconut Grove. And my landlord was a, a police officer. And so he would come over. And, uh, we, and, we, and we had a wonderful exchange uh, between us. And then he would leave out of my door, you know. And then he would come back about a minute later and go, Hey, Kevin. And I was like, yeah. He goes, oh, your door is not locked. I said, yeah, I closed the door and it was locked or it was closed. Yeah, yeah, but it wasn't locked. And I said, oh, I, I'll make sure I lock it, you know. Now, the reason I'm mentioning this is because I even told him, I said, look, I do not spend my day afraid of the world right, right. attacking me. You know, I, I don't want to live my life that way, bound by a prescription given to me by the world. Mm -hmm. That my safety comes from my, my landlord, who's a, a officer? No, mm -hmm. you know, at all. And I told him, I said, I love you. Thank you for the reminder. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll do that every night, by the way. I will, you know, close the door and lock it before I sleep, but it is not because I, my safety resides there. No, mm -hmm. my safety is given to me as well as my inheritance, as well as my protection mm -hmm. and everything, and even abundance mm -hmm. comes from my source. And everything that we experience will come mm -hmm. beautifully and wonderfully and ma magnificent. Uh, Beautiful. Yeah, thank you for saying that beautiful, <laughs> difficult word for me tonight. <laughs> Comes from your source. Okay? All right. Everyone okay? Yeah, great. I think that we did the proper time here. Yes, beautiful. And uh, everyone say hello to everybody here on Facebook Live. We love you. We love you very much. Hello. And no one has told you today that they loved you. Allow us to be the first. We love you so much. And you are pure light.